Hi everyone! Yesterday I started reading a new book, Junie B, First Grader, Toothless Wonder. If you remember yesterday, June found out Junie B has a loose tooth and she has a loose tooth on the top. She's going to be the first one in her class that has one of her loose teeth on the top. A lot of you have lost your loose, your top two teeth and it's very, very exciting. So I'm sure you have some connections to Junie B. Today we're going to read chapter two called Uncle Lou. The speaker came in at 10 o'clock. Her name was Miss Chris, and Miss Chris told us all about recycling. Also, she showed us a movie. It was called Dan Dan the Soda Can. It was very thrilling, I tell you, because Dan Dan the Soda Can lived in a soda machine at a gas station. And then one day, a lady bought him to drink. Only too bad for Dan Dan, because the lady drank his soda, and she threw him right out her car window. And Dan Dan the Can got all dented. But hurrah, hurrah, the cop lady was caught, a cop caught the lady littering, and he gave her a big fat ticket. Then the can man took Dan Dan to a recycling center, and the man got cash money. Plus, Dan Dan got fixed up good as new, and bingo, he turned into Dan Dan the orange juice can. It was a miracle, I tell you. Room one clapped and clapped at that happy ending. Then Miss Chris passed around stickers of Dan Dan the soda can for us to stick to our shirts, and the sticker says, Recycling makes sense. Ha! Huh? Get it? Sense? Like sense? That's a good one, I think. Here's a picture of Dan Dan the soda can. Recycling makes sense. <laughs> After that, all of us went to lunch and recess, and we were still in happy moods. On the playground, Jose and Lenny and Shirley asked to see my loose tooth, and then pretty soon, all the other children wanted to see it too. And so finally, I stood them all in a row, and I let them look real close. And after they looked, I walked down the row, and I showed them how far I could bend it. Herb clapped and clapped. Jose and Lenny whistled. Sheldon tried to pick me up. That is not a normal reaction, I think. You're going to look so cool when it finally comes out, Junie B, said Herb. C had said, Jose, you're going to look really cool. Like a hockey player, I bet. Yeah, said Lenny. Hockey players almost don't have any teeth. Neither do kickboxers, said Shirley. Maybe you'll look like a kickboxer, Junie B. Just then, Sheldon did a sigh. I just hope you don't look like my toothless Uncle Lou, he said. My toothless Uncle Lou never brushed or floss. And then all of his teeth fell out. I made a sick face. Sheldon shrugged. Well, it's not, he's not totally toothless, he said. He still has one bottom tooth left, and it's kind of yellow. But it can still bite an apple. After that, Sheldon walked away. I watched him go. Then I sat down in the grass, and I tried and tried not to think of toothless Uncle Lou. After school, me and Herb rode the bus home together. We sit next to each other every single day, except not Saturdays or Sundays or weekends. Me and Herb talk about lots of stuff on the bus, only today I didn't feel like talking hardly because I was still upset about looking like Uncle You-Know-Who. I slumped down in my seat very glum. What if I look like a weirdo, I said. Huh, Herb? What if I look like Toothless Uncle Lou? Herb patted me. Don't worry. You won't. Probably. I kept on worrying. Yeah, only today is Friday, Herb. And so and so by Monday, my tooth will be already be out, I bet. And what if I come into school looking like Toothless Uncle Lou? And then all of Room 1 starts making fun of me. And they form a circle on me. And they laugh and they skip and they throw fruit. Then all of a sudden I did a gasp. <gasps> Because I had an even worse problem that popped into my head. I grabbed Herb's shirt. Oh no, Herb, oh no, I said. What if I don't even look like myself on Monday? Not even a tiny bit. I mean, and then I get on this bus and you don't even recognize me. And so you pass right by my seat and I just sit all by myself. All alone and toothless. Herb looked down at his shirt. He said to please take my hands off of him. And, I smoothed, and he smoothed himself out. Maybe you should look on the bright side, Junie B, he said. Even if all that bad stuff happens, which it won't, probably, you'll send, still end up with a bunch of money from the Tooth Fairy, right? And that's good, isn't it? As soon as he said that, I had chill bumps came on my skin, and my stomach got flutterflies in it. I quick looked out the window so Herb couldn't see my face, because the Tooth Fairy is a whole other can of worms. On Monday, we're going to read chapter three called Ow. 
we'll see what happens. See you then, guys.